We said it about the nine minute mark. Australia had 22 points on the board. They really needed to put something together quickly. Five minutes later, they've only put three points on the board. So against a team like Canada, in a gold medal game with the pressure on, it's not looking very good at this stage. Reggie really rubs it in there. The lead is the most it's been in the game. It's 17 points. There are four minutes to go. Tesh breaking away down the middle, taking them all on, flicking it for Coglin. Back for Tesh. Shoots from outside. Unable to hit. No rebounders there. Taken by Kotrowski. Well, typical of, of how this game has gone. The outside shots have not gone down. No inside shots. Canada, on the other hand, get a multitude of good opportunities, which they've taken advantage of as the referee calls three seconds. Unable to get out of that key quickly enough. Riders with Peter Kaur almost getting onto the court there. He's so excited, urging them on. They've got to try and turn this around in a hurry. Tesh. The crowd, you can sense, they're just wanting to explode. They want something to cheer about. Tesh is fouled and will shoot two free throws, and she's hit the pine a lot in this game. Well, Tracy Ferguson shakes her head in kind of disbelief. She said, I was just playing aggressive defense. As Lisa Tesh once again takes her time getting up. Coaching staff of the uh, gliders, knowing there's probably not a whole lot they can do at this stage of the game. 22 turnovers for the gliders. Across the tournament, they had been averaging 10 per game. Well, again, Kennedy got to give them full credit. They've stepped up when it counts. A lot of experience in some of those players. Benoit in particular. And she uh, was on those teams that has won everything since 92. She wants to continue that. Three of 17 from the field for Lisa Ortesh in this game. She's now five of 14 from the free throw line. One out of two makes it a 16 point game. Go. Offensive foul or a block? It's an offensive foul. Well, I think Tony Gonzalez saw the contact. He had to make a fairly quick decision. He did. Went Australia's way. I don't know if that was his first inclination, but Australia gets it. Yeah, the host nation, they're 16 down. Three minutes to go. Time running it down. Hey, I'll give him a break. Yeah, I want these people to like him. <laughs> Coglin. For Richie. For Tesh. Tesh, that's for two long-range shot. Gets her own rebound, brilliant! And guess what? <laughs> Liesl Tesh is off to the free throw line. And guess what, Liesl Tesh is once again <laughs> on the floor. She spent as much time on the floor as she has been rolling on the floor. Great rebound. That gives you a great perspective. A camera beneath the scoreboard. Here at the Superdome. Giant scoreboard hovering over the floor as Tesh needing two here to cut it back to 14. Every time I come into the Superdome, I, I look up at that scoreboard and I, I, I just hope that the chain that holds that big thing up there is very strong. <laughs> One of two for Tesh again. So she's two of four from the last two trips, cutting it back by ones. It's down to 15 the difference, but time running out for the gliders. Peters takes it forward for Canada. Look at the control here. Blocked by Tesh, that was nice. But Benoit did a great job to get open, but uh, Lisa Tesh realizing, kind of covered it down as Canada goes for the timeout. Kind of an interesting call by the coach of Canada, maybe up. Good shooting and great defense. That person's just hoping that the soap at home is there and it works well. Ah, great to see. I think the inhibitions of Australians and crowds is Sandy Hallway there taking in the action. You see so many people who have come here that just love to cheer and cheer for Australia. It's been fantastic to witness over the last month with both the Olympics and the Paralympics. Yes, the Sydney sports supporters 
have just been outstanding. Shot clock is down to 14 seconds. Can they get this great defensive play that Peter Corr asked for? No. Foul was called. Marnie Peters will be off to the free throw line to shoot two free throws. So once again, Benoit there with the ball in her hands just kind of circles the, uh, the whole basket, the whole half of the basket, and uh, as the defense tries to adjust, someone sneaks in. She finds that player. Marnie Peters looking to get on the score sheet. Just looked over at the coach. He gives a little fist like, okay, one more point up, and Marnie got, his, got a point on the board. Two out of two, the margin is 17. They're excited and a turnover, and Benoit can go all the way. Foul, more free throws. It's become a foul fest. Little Paula Coughlin there. Just lost the handle. Tried to push up the floor pretty quick. And as she got possession, she had to toss it back in as Peter Corr. A little bit dejected, I'm sure, but uh, still second in the world is not too bad. Especially when you're up against the quality of Canada. The Canadians know they have this now. A remarkable story. Unbeaten in major international competition since they won the Paralympic Games gold medal in Barcelona in 1992 from their World Championships and Paralympic Games victories. And Benoit just rolled onto the sideline. Australia will have possession. It happens so often in wheelchair basketball, the ball bangs off the ring and it goes out and because you're blocking out inside, the, the free throw shooter has the best angle to actually get to the ball. Tesh for three. Long range rebound. Benoit is there. Canada, since Australia led 9 to 8, have outscored them 2 to 1. 36 to 18 is Tesh. Managing to rebalance herself there is called for the foul. Well, Lisa's going to have fun right to the end, it looks like to me. Chasing down Benoit because she was frustrated she missed that three point attempt. She's going to be subbed out of the game. She should receive a great ovation from the crowd. What a tournament for Liesl Tesh. It's going to end with a silver medal. Now one thing you definitely say about Lisa Tesh is a true Aussie and the fact that every time she hits the floor, she has a go. And for tonight at least, hitting the floor literally. Inside of two minutes to play, Canada's lead is 18, the most it has been in this gold medal playoff. It was 10 at halftime. Ritchie for Coughlin. Turnover, Canada get it again through Peters. Benoit is fouled. Oh, and she's gone down heavily. It sounds bad. It sounds terrible. We get that microphone down there with that camera. She comes up smiling. I guess when you're a minute 46 from having another gold medal draped around your neck, you would come up smiling, but the bruises, well, they'll come up tomorrow. Counts the first, she's 40 years old, almost as old as Leroy Loggins. shooting like the ageless one here not quite for the second but as if she meant it she knew exactly where it was going recovers the offensive rebound had it knocked away fighting for it like kids in a candy store there getting for the diving for the one that's fallen on the floor Canada by 19 jump ball called they had the possession arrow they'll come up with the basketball hey, just watch Benoit play and no matter if they're up 20 down 20 one second to go or whatever, she's going to play right to the end. It is going to end up a comprehensive victory. Peters unable to extend the margin to 20 points. Farrell for the gliders. And a jump ball is called. Possession arrow for the gliders. Canada beat Mexico 60-28. to Beat Germany 36-26. Beat Japan 49-32. Won the semi-final 42-23 against the Netherlands. And now is going to win the gold medal game by another double-figure margin. Well, they definitely have been the class 
in women's wheelchair basketball. The Aussies are having a go. They're undefeated in this tournament as well until this game. Unable to haul it in was done. And Ritchie out of bounds. Canada ball 105 to play. And the Canadian coach Tim Frick can clear the bench. He can bring on those that haven't had such a good go in this game to give them a taste of the gold medal. Well, the thing is with the Canadian bench, you, you see everybody's played already. The people coming in, actually uh, three of them started this game. So he's giving everybody a go as he has all this tournament. Nine players have averaged, as I said earlier, 16 minutes or better. So a true team effort here by the Canadians. Coughlin with the rebound. We are inside of a minute to play. Farrell crashing into Radke. Managed to keep possession, but the pass for Coglin's cut off. Coglin will recover from the scramble. And the gliders are away. Can they get another basket? 30 seconds to go. Coglin from outside. Short. Radke the rebound. 46-27 the score. Canada with 23 points in each half. The gliders with 13 in the first half and 14 in the second. They'll run it down for one final shot. Tracy Ferguson looks over and says, Coach, you want me to shoot or just run it out? They'll run it out. They are the queens of the court. Canada win their third straight Paralympic gold medal. A comprehensive victory for Team Canada. The decade of dominance is complete. Three Paralympic Games gold medals and two World Championship gold medals unbeaten in major international competition for 10 years. The Aussies, well, a silver medal, their best ever performance at a Paralympic Games or World Championships. And while they are disappointed for now, when they reflect on this game, they will certainly be happy. And Canada, Bob Turner, a 46-27 win. They were, over the last five games, outstanding. Well, fantastic ever there by Canada. They did everything right in this game, showed their experience, showed their composure. The Aussies really did have a go. 9-8 did not let the nerves get to them. But then I think just the, the factor of field goal percentage, free throw percentage, you know, those things start to take over in a game, and all of a sudden you find yourself down 5 points, 10 points, then 15. And the way the game was being played, the Australians really had a, a tough knock to try and come back. So full credit to the Canadians. They, they deserve this gold medal. But I'm sure all the Australians will put that silver medal around their neck and say it's not too bad. Canada, well, gee, that lady Del Cole. She was one of two from the field at halftime as we recap that final score. She finished at five of six from the field with 10 points. She and Benoit were just simply unstoppable for the Australians to guard defensively. And that's why Canada outshot the Aussies 38 to 22% from the field. Canada entered the game as favorites and they have just played a most comprehensive game tonight with a home for the Australian coach, Peter Kaur. He'll be happy when he looks back and reflects on this competition for the gliders. The Canadian girls, as you would expect, are celebrating. They'll be back here tomorrow night to watch their men's team against the Netherlands in the gold medal playoff. A standing ovation by this big crowd who have stayed on here at the Superdome. The glider fans supporting the girls who wave back. And it's good to see them smiling too, Bob, because they have met a team, as we've mentioned often throughout the broadcast, that have been the best in the world for 10 years now. No question. I, I think, you know, Canada, the women have done the job tonight in uh, women's wheelchair basketball. As we said throughout the commentating tomorrow night, Canada 